Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. We are just gonna wait for a few more people to jump on, but thank you so much for joining us and getting ready to get all of the info that we have for you today on zero dollar marketing strategies for your real estate business. So um, we've got a lot to cover, so I just wanna jump in. Let me go over the agenda with you. And I am someone who needs to be streamlined a lot. <laughs> so I've taken a lot of notes. So here's the agenda. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about, obviously, the importance of marketing, right? Uh, we're going to talk about what, in our opinion, from what we've seen and experienced, the best form of marketing. And I'm going to tell you why it's the best form of marketing. And we're going to talk about what's holding you back from this kind of marketing and how to break through some limiting beliefs that are holding you back, how to get started. And Jason is going to take over and talk about how to keep growing. Um, as you know, we have some very large accounts. Uh, we have a Facebook group that is open to all of you if you haven't joined already. We are uh, building up our YouTube channel as well. Um, this one with real estate as our focus. Uh, we've had several multimedia accounts and different platforms that we use. And it's obviously our favorite way of doing things and connecting with people. So coming into 2023, we are really going to focus on building our community. Let's talk about the importance of marketing. Coming into 2023, we know that things are going to get cut as far as the budget, but marketing absolutely should not be one of those things. That doesn't mean that you're going to have to spend more money on it because this is something that is more cost effective than ever. Back in the day, right, in business, we used to pay people to market for us, right? And we just hope that they do a good job. Now it's more in our hands more than ever. And it's also a lot more cost effective because of that. So you have a lot more control over it. And as you may already know, you know, being an entrepreneur, and being in business, you always have two jobs, right? You don't just, you had one job. Nope, that's not us. Like we all have two jobs. It's whatever you do as a profession, right? Uh, for a lot of us, it's real estate agents or investors or what have you. And then the other thing is lead generation, right? It's marketing because you need people for whatever product or service, right? So we're going to talk about the best marketing strategy. And I'm going to tell you why we think it's the best. What is marketing, Jason? I have always seen it as a way to get inbound traffic. It's outbound messaging that you put out that then in turn gets inbound traffic to come back in, whether that be you put out a flyer and somebody picks up the phone and calls you, or you put out a TV ad and somebody responds to that ad and, and calls your office. But putting something out in the world that attracts business into you. Putting yourself out there, not being a secret agent. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, oh, welcome back, Tyrone. Um, yeah, so to simplify it, right? Marketing is just letting people know that you exist, that you are here, you're around, you know, I exist and I, I do this thing, right? Simply that's all marketing is, right? So know you like you trust you. We've all probably heard that before. That's what marketing is. Branding, now branding is something a slightly different. Branding has to do with your style, with your perception, right? How people perceive you. But branding essentially is, all that is, is just saying, hey, I do this and I do it really well. Right. And I feel branding is where people think of you even um, before you've reached out to them. So marketing does the work for you to get direct response marketing. You hear that term, but branding is something where people are like, when they think of yeah. real estate, they think of you. That's what it is. Right. Exactly. So we want to think about this as we're just always trying to increase our sphere of influence. Right. So the most effective measurement of marketing and branding. I would say is just that is how we can how can you measure how effective your marketing is and to me the answer is going to be am I top of mind am I the first person that people think about you know when I say um, what other industry is there insurance it's the first insurance 
Uh, I guess State Call Farm. Plug, State Farm. Me too, right? Who do I use? State Farm. <laughs> so, I mean, and why is this? Like, why? It's because people are busy, right? We we don't want to spend our time researching the best of. Nobody, we're all trying to be the best of whatever we're doing, right? So when you go to look for a dentist, what are you doing? Like, you're not going to research. Well, some of you might, right? But most of us are going to say, hey, Jason, you have nice teeth. Who's your dentist, right? So, and maybe you'll get another one. And maybe you'll go a little further down the rabbit hole when you're comparing prices, right? But we don't compare rates as real estate agents, do we? So, so basically that's marketing. Um, we only have the mental capacity for two. That's in my notes. And it's true. You know, it's like, hey, do you know a dentist? Oh yeah, I use so-and-so, but I used to go to so-and-so or, you know, so think about that. We don't have a long list of people. So what is the best form of marketing in our opinion, in our experience? But uh, let's talk about the best strategy for us. It's going to be video marketing. Uh, but not just video marketing. It's going to be video marketing that focuses on personal branding. And here's why. One, it's going to give you the most exposure, right? Uh, so I have it here. Some people use mailers, right? So let's use that as an example. I think mm -hmm. you did earlier. Yeah. So let's say you're using mailers, which by the way, if you're doing any form of marketing, that's fantastic, right? It's better than nothing. And hopefully you're getting results from everything that you're doing. But most people are on social media an average of 147 minutes a day. And they check their phones close to 70 times a day. That's a lot. I mean, but we're all doing it, supposedly, most people, right? So you've got to stop and ask yourself, how often do you check your mailbox? You know, maybe once a week. <laughs> some some of us don't want to check the mailbox because there's bills, right? <laughs> and not, not as many checks. So it's the same thing as, you know, if you're an agent, it's great that you have a million dollar listing, right? But would you rather have a million dollar listing in Leesville, Louisiana? My good old, I'm just making fun of it because it's my hometown, you know, population of 5,472. Or would you rather have that million dollar listing in New York City, population of 8.5 million, right? It's a no brainer. Why? Because there's going to be more options, more buyers, more people who are billionaires, right? Who could afford it as well. So we always are trying to position our in front of where the people are. You know, we used to, sometimes we try to get people to come to us, but why not just go where everyone is already? Most of you found us through social media, right? So most exposure, the most eyeballs on you. And, you know, let's, let's go to the next reason why it's the best, in our opinion, it's the most affordable. It's the price of your phone, right? Or the price of the internet. And you know that you would already have that had you not been in any business. You're not going to stop, you know, you're not going to cut off your internet. It's not just for marketing, right? Like you're glued to it. You're glued to your phone. So this is marketing, putting you there at the fingertips of someone like literally. And then the third reason, but I'm also going to give you uh, a few more, even deeper reasons why I just believe in the power of video so much. The third reason is it's going to give you the most leverage. Okay. So your Instagram reels, uh, you know, your TikToks, we're not going to talk a lot about TikTok because we don't know what's going on with TikTok. Uh, Facebook posts, these, these things are going to play for you while you're asleep, you know, days, weeks, months after you've posted them and they can be shared and saved easier than anything else, right? Someone is more likely to save your post than they are to save the magnet that you mailed them. And it's just the truth, right? And your YouTube account not only is going to work for you 24-7, 365, but talk about not costing anything. It can even make you passive income 
right? So YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, social media, these things are going to work harder and longer for you than you can and any other salesperson that you put, you know, into action. It's just the truth. And it's passive, you know, you do the work one time and it just keeps going for you. So these just are enough. Like those three reasons are enough, wouldn't you say, to do video. But I'm going to give you two more reasons why I think we don't think about enough. Okay. The first one isn't that positive, but you have, if it's working for you, then it's easier to embrace. Okay. But whether we like it or not, the internet is tracking our behavior. Okay. So I'll give you an example. I found a realtor who was, um, I love his content. He's just doing, he was doing such great content. I went down his entire rabbit hole. I think I watched every short that he put out on YouTube and um, I just loved his, his work. And about two days later, I went, I was searching for, I think it was like seller finance homes. And I found this house I really liked. And I was interested and I realized that I had come to his website and then I realized he's not even the listing agent. And I was like, hmm, like this isn't coincidence. Okay. Had I seen him in a coffee shop two days later, that would have been like serendipity, right? I would have been blown away. But because it's online, it's not coincidence. It's marketing, right? So we have to think about how algorithms work. The job of any algorithm is to track behavior and to feed the consumer whatever it is more of what they're looking for, right? So if I go, I see something, I heart it, then the algorithm says, oh, you want more of that. Let me give you more of that, right? The job of Google is to deliver whatever the user is searching for. Google has to stay relevant, right? So the easier that they can find whatever it is that you're looking for, the better, the more people will use Google right? It is a search engine. YouTube is owned by Google. So what better place or way to be found than on a search engine, right? So this whole thing about, you know, I know that they're asking us like, do you, do you mind if we track your behavior? <laughs> okay, great. But the whole idea, if you stop and think about it, the whole job of the algorithm is to track your behavior, is to collect data, right? So there's not like there's some moral coding happening that says the computer goes, that's my limit, right? Like that's my moral limit. I, I can track everything about you because that's exactly my job, you know, but not that. I won't do that. That's not happening. Okay. The only way that could happen is to turn the machine off, right? Because it's its job. The data is getting collected. It's getting stored and it's getting used. When you're a marketer or when you're a professional and you're out there advertising, you can use this to work for you, right? Maybe not so much as a consumer, but you can. we can also say, that, you know, many years ago, we probably wished that people would give us what we wanted and needed easier and faster and more conveniently, right? So I don't know, but I do think and know that this is happening. So use it to your advantage. But here is my most important reason why video is so powerful, okay? Video is a multi-sensory experience. Jason and I both come from the film and television world, okay? So we, we are well aware of what it's like and how to communicate and convey certain things through camera and through the lens. But you, as a, even a moviegoer, you know, or when you're watching television, you know the way it feels. Like, it's so easy to just be in it right? And it's because it's the human experience. So in video, we don't just get to hear and see you with the right sound effects, with the right music and, and audio and the right visuals. You can actually begin to taste, to smell, to feel, right? And so it becomes this multi-sensory reality, this experience. And you know, it's the reason it's so powerful when it comes to marketing is that it gives people a real opportunity 
to know you, trust you, love you, right? To really decide for themselves because a picture just can't do it. Okay, the thing about Instagram, Instagram, if y'all remember this, Instagram was a picture sharing platform. And now Instagram is like, no, no more pictures, right? We don't want to show them. So, you know, a picture can say a lot, but it can't give you that. And, you know, an email certainly is not going to give you that as well, right? But here's, here's what people really don't stop to realize. And this is why it's super powerful. This is why video is really powerful. Not only are you giving people the opportunity to know you, love you, trust you, but you are getting the advantage of knowing that people know you, love you, trust you. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say that they just see your picture or they don't see anything about you. They just call up the brokerage, right? And you go out there to meet them for the first time. You've just spent all your gas money, you know, your time that you're not getting back, more importantly, to go and meet someone to let them decide, oh, you know, I don't like you, right? Like, or, you know, oh, I mean, they seem like really knowledgeable, but they sound just like my ex-wife, right? Or, you know, it's just, or the opposite, you know, let's say they see you on video and, oh, you know, she seems really green, but man, she reminds me of my college best friend. Doesn't she remind you of Carol, honey? You know, you know I could see this in the gestures or something. Give her a shot. It happens all the time. This is how we make decisions, right? So think about like dating websites. You know, when you just see someone's picture and then they show up and they're not like their picture at all, right? What do you do? You instantly lose trust. And you're out. Like, it doesn't matter. I don't know if dating sites use video now, but they should, right? Because you really want to get to know somebody. So think about the advantage that you have if you were to remove all the nervousness of all the, oh, you know, like, okay, I landed this appointment and now I'm going out there to meet them for the first time. And I don't know how they're going to respond to me. If they've seen a video of you already, then you know that they like you enough to take the appointment, right? So you're going to be more at ease. And now you trust each other. You like each other, you know, to a point, right? You feel like you know one another. You can feel safe. And so that, to me, is one of the biggest advantages. Not to mention, too, that when you put yourself on video and you put, put that video out for the world to see you, that takes courage, right? But for you to do that also gives you this feeling of feeling like people do know you, you know, like, hey, I saw a video of you, but I really liked it. Or, you know, you sound like you really know what you're talking about. Thank you. And then you just feel like, ah, you know, I feel like I know you now because I know what you like, you know, and they know exactly what they're getting for the most part. And, and it allows people to experience you in a way that they don't get any other way. And I find that just because of how we've been preconditioned to see celebrities, we see people on video repeatedly. And then now for whatever reason, even like your local newscaster, like I remember we used to see the, the weather uh, man at the local restaurant and we we're like, oh, wow, that's him, you know, just because he told us the weather. You know, so, 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 so when somebody sees you repeatedly in video form, for whatever reason, something else, they, they feel like they have a deeper connection with you than just, um, just seeing a picture. Yeah. And I love what Bree said about just uplifting others and allowing people to talk. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that, I mean, it's funny that that's like a, wow, that's rare. Right. But getting, letting people get to know you. If you want to know more people, you have to let people get to know you, right? And it does take courage, but it pays off. It certainly pays off. So basically what we're saying here is you are building your personal brand, okay? Because at the end of the day, you're not, you're not selling houses, okay? They're not even your house, <laughs> for the most part, right? You are selling yourself. You are selling yourself. And when you're in real estate, you know, everybody's kind of got the same product. If you're the buyer's agent, right? It's not even your house. It's not about that. 
y'all, is that doesn't give you longevity, okay? Being an agent is a contact sport, right? It is about, it is an art of human interaction and human connection. People can look at houses all day long on Zillow all by themselves and trust us, we do it all the time, right? So <laughs> I think I saw a funny, uh, like a funny commercial one day where it was talking about when you get into your 30s and 40s, like people are like going goo goo gaga over Zillow. You know, it's like, honey, what are you watching? <laughs> and you know, like even we go on self tours using Rently, right? So it's not that people need you to meet them there to open up a door. So you can go in and look into a house, right? We need to connect with each other. So if you look at certain companies like Carvana, okay, Carvana, they took salespeople out of the equation, right? And they sold cars in vending machines. And it was a total online experience. It sounds really good. And I'm going to be honest, I, I like that experience. You know, I like the thought of that. But Carvana is going out of business. Now, I'm not saying that's why, right? I don't know the inside outs of Carvana, but they're going out of business. So I don't think that model necessarily works. And maybe, and I know for a fact that in real estate, there are companies trying to move to that model. But what makes you irreplaceable is always going to be your humanity and the fact that you are dealing with other human beings. I think after 2020, we can all agree that human interaction and human connection are essential. They're essential to our mental, emotional, physical, you know, spiritual well-being. And I'm sure that it's no different to our financial health, right? Our financial well-being. So, you know, congratulations. You got one thing going for you. You're a human being. And human beings are always going to be obsessed with being human because it's a complex experience. It's an extraordinary experience, right? So we're never going to stop being interested in human beings and being human. And that's exactly why social media is as big as it is. So what I want us to do is I want to take you on a consumer's journey with this, okay? This is something that we've really experienced. Uh, Jason and I moved to Katy, Texas, and we didn't know anybody here. And we were looking for a CPA. OK, so not knowing anybody, not getting any referrals, we were like, hey, let's just Google it. So we did. And I will show you the first thing that came up. So up pulls, you know, a website. It looks professional, kind of generic. Let's scroll it. There's a picture. All right. So we get an idea. Of course, we all, you know, instantly have a billion bits of information, 11 billion, right, coming at us when we see a picture and we... We assume things, we get a, a feeling. There's some testimonials. All right, I mean, he looks professional and it's nice that he has the number right up there. Makes it easy to contact him. Okay, so that's experience number one. We might call him, you know. Now, let me show you uh, number two, an example of number two. National studies have shown that the average person will save about $800 by using a professional CPA to prepare their taxes. Here at Paramount Tax and Accounting CPAs, we find that's very often the case, and in fact, it's sometimes more. Hi, I'm John Willem with Paramount Tax and Accounting CPAs. We specialize in tax and accounting for individuals and businesses. At Paramount Tax and Accounting CPAs, we're a progressive and dynamic company we make sure that we stay on the cutting edge of technology. At Paramount Tax and Accounting CPAs, we understand that each client is uniquely different. We'll make sure that we tailor our services to meet those needs. We want to be your trusted advisor. Our goal is to help you realize your dreams. Our clients are our friends, and as such, we give them our cell phone number so they can call us during the year. We don't charge for that. We want them to call us. If they have a small problem or a question, it's so much easier to take care of it during the year rather than at tax time when it's going to cost a lot of time and money. At Paramount Tax and Accounting CPAs, we understand that time is money, so we'll make sure that we do your taxes and accounting in a timely and affordable way. 
We love what we do here at Paramount Tax and Accounting CPAs, and we'll make sure that our team provides you with professional and affordable service. All right, so that's number two. Um, and you know, you can put in the comments like what you're picking up from, from these examples. That'll be really helpful. And so we have one more that I want to show you. And this one we just pulled from social media. You can structure your income sources to do what the government incentivizes you to do. You'll save a lot of money on taxes. And what I mean by this is Congress writes the tax laws. The IRS just enforces them. And what is Congress made up of? It's made up of business owners, investors, and real estate owners, right? You have to do what they want you to do if you want to save money on taxes. Right. So, you know, I'm going to hear your thoughts. What were you able to really pick up anything from these people uh, from... Uh, what did, were you able to pick up from just the picture of the website? So the website is professional, right? But these days, everybody has a website, right? And it was very generic, right? I can look at that picture and I can assume things, but I don't quite get a good grasp of who that person is, whether I'm going to like them, whether you know I'm going to trust them. I don't feel like I know them, right? For sure. Can we all agree on that for example number one? Number, yes. Yeah, so we say number one is more generic, right? Um, Tyrone says number two is a lot more intimate. We're seeing what we're going to get. Absolutely. And so if you notice in example number two, number two was more of a commercial, right? They, they paid somebody to come out and shoot a commercial. So it really showcased their whole office. But what I took away from it was, wasn't that, oh, it's an office, right? I didn't take much away from the company. I remember the man, the man who was speaking. I felt like he came off really genuine. Um, you know, uh, he taught me more, certainly a lot more than the website did, right? Because most of us, like we like we know, we, we don't have time to sit there and read through things. Most of us don't read like that, you know, and that's just a fact. So in number two, I learned like, I can call this man throughout the year. You know, that's, that's really good service and it, without charge, you know, that was something I was like, hmm, you know, it, it's worth, it's worth meeting him. Uh, he sounded knowledgeable. I got a feeling of trusting him. Maybe you didn't, but the point is that he gave you the opportunity to decide for yourself, right? And so what about number three? Number three, what I noticed was, and I wish that we would have went back and found um, one of that that guy's different, a different video where he's just sitting there talking. Um, but number three was very specific about the kind of people that he works with, right? Real estate. Um, and what I noticed too was it was just as dynamic of hearing him speak. Um, and there was no production. It wasn't like he was, you know, he had a paid commercial, right? And it wasn't about his company at all. I don't know if he has, he runs his own practice or, or he's part of a company. It was about him and about how knowledgeable he was, right? Uh, three was more low budget, but still memorable. Yeah. And he incited more emotions, I think. For sure. Uh, Richie says number three is very informative. Right. So now it, let me ask you this. Is number one even in the picture for you? Like, is is he an option? No, he's not. Right. We forgot about him. One is out for sure. Yes, exactly. So here's the thing. Let me ask you this, too. And I mean. You can get it right. It doesn't matter. But in number two, does anybody remember the name of the company? Because this is going to come up a little later. I remember it because I've seen it. Or Richie, of course, you remember it. So most of us wouldn't even remember the name of the company because it doesn't matter. Because in that commercial, what we were being, what we were noticing and what we were taking in is that guy. Right? Would you agree? Like, do I trust that guy? Because that guy is the company. Right? So that's really important. It's an important thing to think about when it comes to personal branding. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, Tyrone says, it might appeal to more bookworm types, though. See, exactly. Right? And that, that's going to be a good point for uh, what I'm about to bring up here shortly. 
like we are I'll just I'll just wait to get there. But these are all really great answers. And thank you so much for participating because this at the end of the day, it's for you. OK. Um, so one thing I also want y'all to take into factor is that none of these guys seem like they were professional actors or, you know, superstar performers. Right. And I know we're looking for CPA. So I don't think that's, you know, a box that you're looking to check when it comes to looking for a CPA. But it's probably not a box that you're looking to check when it comes to a real estate agent either. Right. But the fact that they're up there doing it matters and it's way more effective. So then maybe number one would have killed it on camera, but we'll never know. Right. Um, so something that I did to just kind of uh, push. My point was on day two, if you registered on day two, I sent everyone a follow-up video, okay? Some of you found us from Instagram. I would say most of you found us from Instagram, okay? Uh, that proves my point right there. Um, but some of you just received emails and came because you received the email and then you received another confirmation email and you showed up, okay? Some of you received or found us on Instagram, and then I sent you a video follow-up. And some of you received an email, and then I sent you a video follow-up to say, hey, what is it that you're coming to learn and blah, 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 and just to introduce myself, right? So I guarantee you that I am further down the pipeline with those of you who have seen me on Instagram right, and decided to join, and then you saw me again, and you feel like you know me a lot more than those people who just received emails from me, right? How many points of contact did you get from me? You know, and you've had several, several times to say, hmm, I don't like her, right? <laughs> I'm not going to show up. But now imagine how I feel knowing that those people saw me on Instagram, decided to register and join, and then I sent them a text, you know, and they still showed up. They still showed up, right? And some of those videos that I sent, my eyes were closed in the beginning, or I felt like my hair was out of place. Maybe I didn't have enough lipstick on, all these things that we just do to ourselves, right? But it didn't let it stop me because I know how effective video is, right? And they still showed up. Imagine how much more at ease I am speaking to those people than the people that only received emails from me who are coming here and joining and meeting me and judging me for the very first time, right? So I want you to put yourselves in our position and especially, you know, just the experience that you're trying to deliver to whoever you're doing business with in real estate, yeah? Um, yep, so I talked to this. So my point is that, you know, if you want to succeed professionally, you've got to start getting personal. You know, you really have got to start letting people see you and make your business about you. Because personal branding means everything and company branding means nothing. It means nothing. And I know that's a strong statement, but I will prove it to you. What would Nike be without Michael Jordan? What would Apple be without Steve Jobs? Tesla, Elon Musk, right? And do you know more about Berkshire Hathaway or Warren Buffett? Because I'm going to be honest with you, I know probably nothing about Berkshire Hathaway, but I know what Warren Buffett's favorite breakfast is. <laughs> right? Wait, so I'm not saying that, uh, you know, we're definitely not saying that it doesn't matter who you do business with, right? As far as a brokerage, like your brokerage will make or break you at times, you know, when it comes to how far you can go in your career, how much money you can make, right? How much support you're going to get. So I'm, we're not saying that, but what we're saying is that you can't hide behind your brokerage, behind the branding of your brokerage. If you're with a brokerage because of its big name, I understand where you're coming from, but just because someone decides to use your brokerage 
doesn't mean they're going to use you, right? And that's why personal branding is so important. Um, A good example that we like to use since we're here in the Houston area is Mattress Mac, right? I've never bought a mattress. (laughs) I have never bought a mattress, but when I think about buying a mattress, I think about Mattress Mac. Yeah, right. for those of you who don't know, he's just somebody who everybody in Houston uh, area will know, and really just the South. Um, he's just an old, older man, but he's been owning the same company, uh, mattress company, for years and years and years, and he does really outlandish marketing um, to to get business, and he bets on sports, and he he it just has a really cool uh, vibe about him. So yes, and Richie says Houston icon. Uh, gallery furniture. Okay, so gallery furniture comes up next in my in my mind. I think Mattress Mac is the company. Like, oh, let's go to Mattress Max, right? Instead of gallery furniture, that is great personal branding, right? I all I know about Mattress Mac is well, I know I feel like I know so much more about him, which is my point. But like, he sells mattresses, he sells furniture. Okay, but he's so much more than that, right? top of mind. We only have space in our, in our minds for two people at most, right? So this is, this is the point, and we're about to uh, bring it home for you on this, is that I am not in the, I'm not on the market looking for a mattress, but I know who Mattress Mac is, right? So let me show you this example, and um, I'll bring it home for you. This is not a test. This is your emergency listing system announcing the commencement of your annual buying splurge. Commencing at the siren, any and all offers, including cash or conventional, will be legal and binding until close. Any talk over interest rates, market crashes, or second guessing will be suspended until the splurge concludes. song has been stuck in my head by the way so music is important as well right but so okay comment what's your opinion i'm sure you have one right um yeah great jam the song is so good um so so what do you think what's your opinion on this guy listen to all of these um all of these opinions but what are we doing right now we're talking about them right we're talking about it, whether we like it, we don't like it. I like the video, the sound is distracting, attention getting for sure, video is on point. You'll definitely remember this guy. And this is my big point about personal branding, okay? He makes his videos almost more about him than he does the property. Now, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just pointing out something that is a major observation, okay? But here's the thing. Even if you're not currently on the market, you're not currently searching, right, for a home, if that came onto your feed, you would remember it. You're going to remember it. It's memorable. So you might even click on it and go, who is this guy? No matter how you felt about it, either you think he's great or you think he's scary or whatever, who is this? Because it's memorable. It's unique and it's different. So now you're going down the rabbit hole and you might even end up following him just because, you know, you're not in looking for real estate, but, but, He's entertaining. So the point is that real estate is boring to people who are not looking to buy or sell. 
Okay. As far as content, right? Like they're not like, Ooh, look at this. I just enjoy doing this. I mean, some of us are weirdos like that, right? We like looking at houses all day long, but for the most part, the average consumer, the average person on social media is not looking for that. So if you were just to stream, uh, let's say that you decide, okay, I know I need to make videos to please the algorithm. I'm just going to do a virtual tour of this property and I'm going to put it up. Okay. That would be much better than posting a picture of you, right? Or just a house, right? Much better than a picture. You're going to get more eyeballs on that. But here's the problem. I might love that house. I might be like, oh my God, I want a backyard just like that. You know, when I grow up, right? So I love it. I see it. I'm not on the market. What do I do? I just move on two weeks down, you know, the line or, you know, two years down the line, whatever. Now I'm, I'm on the market. I'm looking, I want to buy a house. Let me find a realtor, you know? Oh yeah. I remember that house. Well, who was it? Do you remember? I don't even think we, we even saw the real estate agent, to be honest with you. I just like that house, you know? So the point is that you've just become irrelevant. You have to do something that further down the line, when someone is looking, they go, oh, Juanita, or, oh, you know, Jason, face tattoo, right? Or call call tattoo. Yeah, right? But, and if they're already following you, because you do put out good content, then it's a no-brainer, right? So this is why personal branding is the, the most necessary thing that you have to do. It's not about the house. It's not about the listing. It's not about the brokerage, Okay. It's about you. You've got to come top of mind. And here's another thing. Let's all just think like a consumer. If someone is willing to highly market themselves, then they're definitely going to be more willing to highly market your property. And when you're looking for a real estate agent, you are looking for a marketer. You are looking for someone who wants to make your listing famous right? Hopefully, you know, I've landed that point for you. Okay. So let's, let's all talk about this. We know, okay, hopefully I've convinced you if you came in, not knowing that video marketing is necessary and the most influential being that we live in an influencer marketing phase of our lives, right? It used to not always be like this, but it is, you know, it matters, right? The person in front of the company Maybe we hopefully we all agree that this is important and that there's a it's a no-brainer that we should be doing this, right? It costs the least amount of money. It's going to give us the most leverage. It's going to give us the most exposure, right? It's going to save us the most time. So why aren't we doing it? And the answer is fear. Like we fear what we love the most. And the thing is that about us humans is that Every single human being needs to be seen and to be heard. That's what we all desire. And honestly, like we just break down if we don't have that. But it's also very scary. Why? Because we live in a world where everyone is judging everyone, right? There's cancel culture where people feel like you can't make a mistake, right? And there's all these things that you're thinking about other people that if you were to go out and put yourself out there, you think that everybody's going to think that about you, right? So it's a jungle up here. And so that's what's holding us all back. But here's the thing. If you get really honest and you go, uh, this is why I love YouTube, okay? Go to YouTube, find these famous YouTubers out there and then go and see if you can see their earliest video and you're going to learn something that's really going to help you. And that thing is that people have to start from wherever they are and nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. And why I love YouTube is that too often we see, we only meet people when they're at the height of their career, right? When they're on the top of the mountain, we don't see the journey that they had to take to get there. And so as inspiring as it is that they've had all this success, YouTube to me is the most ex- inspiring because they let they take you on their journey. And throughout those years, it's also the most effective because you really feel like you know them. You have watched them grow. They've allowed you 
to witness that. You know what I mean? Like, you have you ever been like, man, that was my band before they blew up. You know, now they sold out. Everybody gets upset when you succeed, right? But do you remember that? Like, you just, you're priding yourself on being one of the first to support them and to love them. And this is the opportunity that you have for yourself and for other people. Because, you know, other business people are watching you as well. Other people who are just people and not in business are watching you as well. And when you step out of yourself and you show up, you give other people permission to do the same thing. So whether you think people are going to judge you for it or, you know, have anything negative to say about you, I guarantee you are going to find people that support you and love you for it. And that will tell you that you are their inspiration. You know, my brother, Richie, here's an example. He, we put out a video about his weight loss journey. That reel alone is that reel. Last time I checked, this was months ago. Okay. Months, months ago. That reel has over 45,000 views on it. It gets loves, likes every day, and people are still comment on it. Why? Because Richie wasn't out there looking perfect or trying to be perfect or talking about how successful he was. He put something out that made people connect to him that was relatable and authentic, right? And that is what we were missing. You know, we, we obviously love being on social media because we love people, but you get burnt out when you see like, oh, everybody's trying to be so perfect, right? And be these influencer type people, but that's really not the most influential thing that's happening. So, you know, I really want to encourage you to be authentic, to stop playing it safe and just start playing it honestly, you know, um, because here's the, here's a big thing for me when in business and in, and in life, right. In our personal lives and our professional lives, they all have one thing in common to be successful. You have to find your tribe. Okay. You've got to find the people in your life that like love what you got, what you do, what you have, right. What you got to give. The same thing in business. You know, we want to do life with you. We want to do business with you, right? So if you're not putting you out there authentically, okay, and you're not personally branding yourself, that is like having a business with no sign out front, right? Like you're open, but nobody knows, right? You're literally hiding your tribe. Now, if you are just depending on your brokerage or your company or playing it so safe, trying to be something for everyone. That is like being a restaurant and having a sign out front that says food. You know what I mean? <laughs> like food. What kind of food are you, right? If you're a pizza, like show us that you're pizza. Pizza is not trying to be something for everybody. You know, we, everybody, it seems like everybody likes pizza, but if I'm in the mood for, you know, Greek, I, I don't need pizza that day, right? But let's, let's take it a step further. If you know, you are a pizzeria and you have your business and you put a sign out there with a, a picture of a pizza. Well, then that's good, right? Like, oh, look, pizza. Like, I want pizza. You want pizza? Let's go eat pizza, right? But if next door to your business is a video sign out there with the pizza, the cheese is stretching, it's sizzling, the ooey gooey dough, right? Like, come on, whose parking lot is going to be full? Because you just gave me an experience. When I see that, I know I feel something. I already know what that pizza tastes like, right? The other pizza Bria, might be better, but I'll never know because I'm going over there. Are y'all getting that? What do you think about that? I do video every day, yet not high quality like this. I don't have a budget for that. Ooh, I love that you said that, Stephanie. I agree with Stephanie, find quality content to be expensive. I don't have an editor, production team, or have knowledge in film. Can you give suggestions to cut costs or how to produce a high quality video? Yes, very good. It provides motivation to keep going. I want some pizza. <laughs> okay, great. So um, we're definitely going to address that. So I'm glad that y'all are thinking about that. And you're at least saying, you know what? Like, I absolutely agree. 
but you know, I can't do that, right? Like some people can do that, but I can't do that. I absolutely agree. There's most definitely a realtor for all personality types. You treat people, the more likely you'll be referred. Absolutely. So Bree, with Bree's comment, like we already know what kind of person Bree is, right? She's already branding herself through that. Okay. And we're definitely going to talk about that because I love that y'all are already bringing this, this stuff up. I want to talk about how to get started. So, and we'll address this whole video high tech thing. And I bet Jason's laughing inside because literally y'all were all we're on is a zoom. You've got zoom. I got zoom. We all got zoom. Nothing high tech about this, right? This mic is nice. It's Jason, but I don't even think it's working. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) I just realized the mic isn't even working. So one of the main things is let's go ahead and address that as far as the cost. Okay. How many of you have a cell phone? How many of you have been on TikTok and danced in front of the camera, right? How many, you already have everything you need. You do not need a microphone, obviously. Good, great thing that that happened. You have a cell phone. That's all you need. So, you know, go and look at the content that you watch. Are you watching high quality productions? No, I guarantee you're probably watching people dance on TikTok at work, or you're just looking at someone talk about something. You watched us go live. All we did was use our phones and turn on. Stephanie, I see your comment too. We're we're going to get uh, into that in just a second. She says, I get what you're saying, but how? I put myself on video practically every day and never get any leads, comments, but not leads. So awesome. Great. And that is certainly a funnel that Jason's going to take us down. So let's talk about this. Okay. Stephanie, I think it's awesome that you're already putting yourself out on, um, out and producing content, right? You're already rolling. Y'all, this does take time. You know, we have these massive followings on Instagram. That took years. There's no barrier there when it comes to like having, needing to have something fancy. You don't need it, y'all, you know, and content, what kind of content are you creating? Maybe another barrier is, well, I don't know what to do, right? And you just told me that it's boring to talk about, you know, real estate, every single day, people are going to shut me off, right? So I'm going to give you some ideas, okay, of how you can start to generate content ideas. So this is something that I call, and I think uh, Richie came up with a math formula. Um, For all you math fans out there, I am a word person. So (laughs) I, and you might want to write this down, okay? Because you can literally just have a stream of consciousness Uh, and write down all of your ideas. So hopefully this is something that just helps you get started. Who, what, where, when, and how equals why, okay? Who, what, when, where, and how equals why. So these are all questions that you can ask yourself to stimulate content ideas. So let's talk about who. Who is the easiest one, okay? Who is like your business card? Okay, this can be your initial video that, you know, instead of handing someone your business card or your website, like we saw in example one, when they go to your website, you can have this video playing and we'll get a really good sense of who you are. Okay, so who, who are you, right? This one, you can use all of those questions to answer to fulfill this first video, who, what, where, when, and how. Who am I? I'm Juanita Walmsley. Uh, What? I'm a a real estate agent. Where? In New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, When? When? You can contact me from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Sunday. How? I love to be. You can contact me on Instagram or, you know, you can email me. Here's my phone number. I literally just gave you all the information that you need. So that's one idea of where you can get started. And hopefully, you know, um, I want to give you all the opportunity to collaborate and to be held accountable. So if you haven't done this and you want to do it, go ahead, shoot your first who video and send it over to us, right? So that we can help you become accountable because it's always so much easier, right? Who, what, when, where, and how equals why. So uh, Richie has a little formula, questions equal way. So, you know, who are you can always be addressed in all of your other videos without that being the, the most important thing, right? You don't need to come on every single day and tell people who you are and that you're a real estate agent. It's going to get really old really quick. Brie, no problem. (laughs) 
Uh, that's why we want to go live. What kind of real estate agent are you? You know, are you commercial? Do you do residential? Do you have a niche or a niche? You know, we're in Texas, so either or, right? What is it? You know, what kind of real estate do you do? What kind of clients do you serve? What should clients consider when looking for an agent? Uh, what should sellers do to get their homes ready for sale? What should first-time home buyers do to make sure that they qualify for a mortgage? You know, just sit down and list all the th all the questions that could start with what that would be relevant. What, 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 right? Who, what, where? Now, where is a huge one for real estate agents and investors? Where? It's all about your city. Become the mayor of your city, right? Know everything about your city and show us that you love your city, right? Where is the best, where are the best neighborhoods? Where's the best yoga studios? The most walkability, you know, the best schools, the best parks. Where's the best Froyo shop? You know, people want to know. And look, we're talking about things every day people talk about, right? How many times do you see food posted? We all love food. You know, a lot of us love yoga. A lot of us love, you know, parks or um, just anything. Think about anything. And you'll start to realize this as you're driving around your city. Like, oh, I love that place. You know, like, I'm going to talk about that. And you, all of a sudden you become the expert on your city. And you can always at the end, you know, Swinny to Walmsley with EXP, hit me up. You know, if you're buying or selling, whatever you want to say, right? But it's not about that. It's just, hey, y'all, I love this frozen yogurt place. I love it. I want to move next door right? <laughs> so now you're talking about things that just keep you relevant, that keep the conversation going and that you're not hammering down on people about, you know, I buy it, help people buy and sell homes. We got it. We know that. Makes sense? And so that list can be endless because you do need to be an expert about your city, right? When this one is super fun. When can be about timing, right? We're always in a market where we're obsessed with timing right now. Is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? When is your open house? And here's the thing. Why aren't you going live at your open house? How happy would that seller be, you know? And other people who are looking for an agent to be their seller agent, right? Like how happy that she put their house, you know, live on Instagram for open house. We're having fajitas at, you know, one, two, three Main Street. Come and join. Like that's impressive. Go live. When is your open house? When is, you know, this tour? Here's something that we learned the other day that was super helpful and would make really good content. When is the best time to hire roofers? Turns out it's in the winter months um, after hurricane season has officially passed. It's cooler up there for the workers and they don't have an overflow of jobs. So, um, you can usually get work done a little cheaper as well. That is something someone selling their house wants to know, right? Super helpful. What about like, when's the best time to plant peonies in your, you know, in your front yard for curb appeal, right? Like these little things that we could just talk about that make you look really knowledgeable, but are also just not, you know, Beaten, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to have a vegan vocabulary. <laughs> like all the phrases are so like mean, like beating a dead horse. Is that the I'm trying, you know, but you get the point, right? Like we don't have to be redundant. And we we have so much more to say that's relevant to real estate when you really stop and think about it. Um, oh, when is the best time to uh when is Lowe's or Home Depot having a sale? People need to know that. Help your clients save money and get the highest return for their houses. How? This is an easy one. How can someone get uh qualify for an FHA loan? How can a buyer get the seller to pay closing costs? How can your sellers get more money by working with you on a seller financing deal? How can they avoid foreclosure by working with you? And here's something, you know, just I'm sure everyone is taking in information about the challenges that we're going to face in 2023, right? Start writing these things down and become the expert on that. Become the expert agent on foreclosures and short sales and, you know, things that are going to be relevant that will help you position yourself to help a lot of people this coming year and allow you to pivot, you know, and adapt to the environment. So here's the thing, who, what, where, when, and how equals why. Because if you get good enough at answering the who, what, where, when, and how, you will never have to answer the why. Why should someone hire you? You'll never have to tell. You'll never have to explain that or pitch yourself. You have footage after footage that explains it all for yourself. 
So is this resonating with y'all? I'm about to pass it on to Jason, who is going to help us build and grow our audiences, which is super important because hopefully now I've given you content ideas. I've explained why this is so important, uh, what you can do to get started, but how do you get an audience in front of you? Now that you have all this great content, right? You want to put it in front of people. I guess I am a mom. I know a lot about schools. Yes, absolutely. That's so important, right? Put yourself in the mind of the consumer. You know, what questions would you be asking if you were on the market to looking to buy or sell, you know, and start answering those questions in your content? Yeah. So is that pretty good? Delivering some some good points here? Yes, you're making sense. Thank you. Jason? Yes. You ready? <clears throat> I am. So I think all of that information is extremely solid. And obviously we're coming from the film and television industry. So we see we have already a passion for making video, but I see so many people that have success with uh, creating video. But the problem is, as um, I believe it was Stephanie said, is not knowing how to get the distribution, right? How to get more eyeballs to see it so that you can get leads coming in. So I'm going to share with you a few strategies we've used to, to reach more people, to build audiences, and how to um, maximize on the opportunity that we have on social media. One of which I'm going to show you is Instagram. And then I'll talk a little bit about YouTube, which is kind of our direction for next year. I'm going to pull up my phone here and share with you a few uh, accounts here that we've been growing. This is one of the uh, many Instagram accounts that we've been growing and why we've been growing multiple Instagram accounts versus just our personal brand. I'll share with you. Uh, what I've found is that uh, it's great to have a personal brand on top of a more searchable brand. So this particular account is called uh, the New Orleans Real Estate Network. It used to be called um, NOLA Hustle, but we've changed it now because we're kind of branding everything under our RETV brand. But what I've been doing here is following people in New Orleans, which is one of the, we're licensed uh, agents in Louisiana. So I've been going to build different city accounts all over Louisiana so that not only we can um, benefit from those audiences, but also as we have partners that we work with and agents on our team and things in different cities that we can then put them on the platforms that we've created to, um, to get a further reach. So I'll share with you how I went about just getting the 3000 followers that we have on this account so that you can either duplicate this on your own personal brand, or you can um, think about maybe setting up some accounts that look like this either way, whatever's easier for you. One of the many ways that I've done this is I call it kind of the birds of a feather flock together strategy. And what I mean by that is I'm going and following people that follow the Chamber of Commerce in New Orleans. So let me find this. And this is live, guys. So who knows what will come up because we're scrolling live on Instagram, which can sometimes be dangerous. Uh, but let's see. New Orleans Chamber. So NOLA Chamber here. But if you are watching from a computer right now, or if you're taking notes, uh, you can even go to your phone and do this right now. Uh, yeah. But if you're just taking notes, his point is that what he does is he goes and he finds the Chamber of Commerce and he starts to follow the people that follow the Chamber of Commerce. Why do you do that? So I do that because I like working with business owners. I like working with, uh, sometimes I find that business owners are more affluent. They want to buy multiple properties. They buy rental properties. Uh, they need to find commercial spaces. So I like to find those types of people. It's just who I, I like working with. And so what I do is I find all the people that are following the Chamber of Commerce in my area. And then I start following and engaging with those people. So I know that they're, 99% of those people are business owners in my city. Share properly. So I'll just jump on camera here and yeah. tell you guys. So that's one of the strategies. Let me know if that makes sense. Richie says, wow, 207 texts. Yes, I have a lot, a lot of text messages. So that is one of the many strategies I use. Another one I use is what I call the 531 method. And the 531 method is basically you just find people that uh, you want to engage with and you uh, like five of their most recent photos, doesn't have to be the exact five, but you like five of their most recent um, photos, you comment a meaningful comment on three of those posts. And this is just general idea. 
And then that typically should lead to one new follow back. So five likes, three comments, uh, meaningful comments, not just like, wow, and thumbs up, but like if they're eating some avocado toast from some restaurant, say, oh, that looks amazing. I got to try that place or something like that. Uh, and that typically leads to people following you back. Then what you can do is once you have built this audience, you can do what we've been doing all week uh, and why many of you are here at this event is going live, just hitting a button, going live, telling people about an upcoming home buyer seminar or your open house, or just talking about what's going on in the market. Hey, interest rates went up today. I know it's scary, but uh, here's what my opinion of it is. You know, all of which people were people thinking about buying or selling the process, you can talk to them about just being real with them and being, um, you don't have to be overly polished. You know, I stumble and, and flub a lot, even though I am a trained film and television actor, I still uh, still mess up a lot, obviously, with tech and all that kind of stuff. But just trying to be as authentic as possible and telling people about the experience you're, you're going. And we need to hit the nail on the head, too. Most agents don't go live enough or at all. Like if you did a live stream at an open house, that would be incredible. If you just even, if you're too scared to even be on camera yet, just flip the camera around and talk about the different rooms. You know, those are all great ways that you can get content that you can um, attract buyers and sellers to, to your brand. Okay. I see a few questions coming in. Let me know if you guys have questions about that. And then I'll share some uh, Google stuff as well. That will stream a little easier. Uh, do you reach out with messages to those chamber followers or simply follow them? Both. So I follow all of them. And then I uh, use that five through one method I talked about and go and engage with those people and talk about their business or invite them. The reason I like to have kind of the city centric one is just because um, it just says like New Orleans something. So it doesn't look like it's just some some random person that's following them and they kind of see the title of who just engaged with them. But honestly, if you just have your personal brand and you're leaving meaningful comments, you're going to get followers back. Yeah. Can you repeat the 531 method? So uh, Stephanie, if we will have you answer your question in the comments, but if you will um, put the 531 method, so is it, it's five likes, right? Mm -hmm. Five photos that yeah. you like or five reels, right? Yeah. Um, so five posts that you like, three comments mm -hmm. will equal one follow back. Yeah. And this doesn't have to be like a full-time job. I know when I start talking about this stuff, people are like, oh, I'm too busy to, to do that. It literally is like while you're waiting for your coffee at Starbucks or while you're you're eating lunch or whatever, you can just scroll through. You're already on social media because you found us, you know? So just start being more mindful of how you're engaging with people. Perfect, Stephanie. Yeah. Five reels, photos that you like, three comments will equal one new follower. Approximately, right? Yeah. And then you... Um, you can't just be a follower, right? You also have to, you're already, Stephanie, putting out video content or or content in general. So it's it's not only the content creation side, which you're already doing, but it's building the audience to actually see that. You can do that through paid ads, but we like to do a lot of organic stuff. So how do you build an audience that you can then go live to or put content out to? And as that snowball gets bigger and bigger, then you'll start seeing leads come in. Uh, one thing that Jason mentioned, you know, obviously we're marketers, right? Like this is what we do for a living. So we don't expect you to go out and build a city centric account, right? Um, so that you can funnel leads into, but your account can become that, right? If you're doing the where uh, correctly, if you're doing that a lot, then your account will become like you're the city expert, right? You're the mayor. So a lot of times I'm just bringing this up because a lot of times people are like, I want to use my personal account. Great. Go for it. You know, get personal, remember? Uh, but, or you don't have to go out and just create some new account, right? Cause that's just a lot more work when really you could just do it on your real estate account if you already have it or do it on your personal page. Okay, now I'm going to share, um, just to give you some ideas on how to create content or what type of content to create, I'm going to show you what I call the alphabet soup method. Juanita might not even know about. Google gives us a lot of answers about what people already want to know about. Okay, so I can just type in our city here, uh, Katy, Texas. And what I do is I scroll down. You can already get some um, things that people are already searching for, Google suggesting us to make content about or that, that people are, are curious about. Uh, so you can find some stuff here, like is Katie a nice place to live? Um, 
How far is Katy, Texas to the beach? What's the closest city to Katy, Texas? Uh, but then if you scroll all the way down, let's see. So here's one uh, related searches. Normally there's more. So I'm going to do another search that just says uh, living in Katy, Texas. And if I scroll down here, the so best area to live in Houston, Texas, subdivisions of Houston, Texas, and then you can see it's giving me more suggestions. And this will just kind of take you down different rabbit holes, okay? Um, you can look at Katie's schools, you could look at uh, best restaurants, all these different things, and it'll just give you content ideas. You can start just building a, a document of things to when you're out and you're at, you're by that pizza place, you can talk about the, the best pizza in town or uh, how to lower your property taxes or just little things that you can just do a quick little research, maybe get an expert to come and give their comments too. Like maybe there's somebody in your, your city that specializes in a certain type of 100% financing loan um, that most banks don't offer or whatever it is, and just make quick, engaging informational content about these various things. And you can throw in your call to action about what brokerage you work for and how to contact you, but it doesn't always have to be just you pitching that side of it. It can also be just informational. How much is too much when posting video content? Like you said, you don't want to be repetitious with the same material. Right. So um, if you were to post the same thing, a matter of fact, don't post the same thing twice, right? Like don't never post the same thing twice. You can always take the same idea and kind of refurbish it, right? Like and, and recycle it and make it something new. But do not post the same thing twice because the algorithm wants original content. Okay. So um, but to answer your question, which is a really good question it's not, it's never too much. And the reason is because the algorithm is going to reward the users who use it the most. The platform wants you to use it. That is the only way they exist and make money, right? So those who use it the most are going to be rewarded by getting their content shared the most, right? By being suggested. Um, so, you want to appease the platform, right? Um, it, it's, the, you know, it's the same thing with anything, like a, you're a repeat customer, right? Like we're going to reward you. We want to keep you happy. So um, the answer is, you know, as much content as you can do, do it. But I would suggest, you know, and we have a social media uh, scheduler, poster uh, software. If y'all are ever interested in that, uh, just send us an email, but you can schedule it yourself. You know, it doesn't take amazing technology, um, but roll it out. You know what I mean? Because the biggest thing is, um, the main thing is you want to be consistent. Okay. It's just like going to the gym, right? Like you can go to the gym once a week and be really intense you know, and focus on intensity instead of consistency, you're not going to get the same results, you know, social media wants you to be on there as much as possible, right? Like, and it's, it's, it's working. So just roll it out as much as you can do, do it, yeah. you know, but uh, be strategic. And I forgot the alphabet soup part of the, of the training. I showed you the Google search, but I didn't tell you why the alphabet part is important. So let me share this one more time. So all you do is you like type your city, the name of your city here, and then you just literally go down the alphabet. So see how these searches change. So Katy, Texas apartments, appraisal, address, uh, area code, average income, arrest, allergy report, attractions. But you can just start going now B, boardwalk, bars, breweries, best restaurants, barbecue, breaking news, um, C, condos for sale, county map, uh, crime rate. Now, obviously, there's some things you have to be careful about when you're navigating, you know, steering and things like that. So uh, just think that part through. But dermatologist, drought, drag, bingo, uh, events, early voting, elevation. So you can just keep going. Elementary schools. Elementary schools. This is brilliant. So you can do that all day long and it'll keep changing. As you start going down a certain rabbit hole, then there's so many other things that expand from that. So, so a Katy, Texas condos, and then it could be Katy, Texas condos under 100,000, under 200,000, under 300,000. You can keep expanding this and all creating unique content. 
Now I will say, uh, Stephanie, you said, should it be different content, what you post on social media for different different things? And I think we need to talk a little bit about that, but I'll also say we're making a big shift in our company to YouTube as our primary long-term strategy. Uh, I love building Instagram accounts because I, I know how to do that so well. Uh, but that is kind of like a quick hit, basically. Like if you're in the grocery store and you're looking at the National Enquirer, you see a headline and you click on that and you go and watch that thing. But I don't think about that two days from now, right? So a lot of the content we put on on Instagram, I can get a lot of people to take action right now if they see it. But if they don't see it within 48 hours, other than some rare cases, like Juanita said with, with a video we posted that's still going viral, that happens less frequently on platforms outside of YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google and it's a search engine. So a lot of that stuff, I'll use this alphabet soup method and we'll start creating content that is houses for sale in KD under 300,000 or whatever it is, something, some long tail phrase that people will search for that can get searched uh, for years to come. So we create the work once and then it's, it's paying for itself over and over and over again. And basically what we're saying is that YouTube, the reason we're shifting over to YouTube is YouTube is going to be kind of our evergreen, like YouTube for years. We're going to get paid on this content, you know, that I made today. It's going to live forever. It's going to outlive us, right? But Instagram and social media platforms, remember that YouTube is a search engine, right? It's Google. It's a search. People go to YouTube for how to, what is, right? The 85% of people go to YouTube to learn. I know I do. That's like the only thing I watch is YouTube, right? But when it comes to social media, we kind of go on there to be social, right? So think about like you're at a party. What are you talking about? Current events, talking about trendy things, right? What's trending? So that is stuff that typically, like Jason says, like what is talked about this week will not be talked about next week, right? So that kind of goes along to uh, Richie's question, right? About how, how much is too much, right? Well, it's really, it depends, right? Because I have people who will find something they like and they comment on a post that I did a year ago. So if they go down your rabbit hole, you know what I mean? Then, you know, who knows? Like I did that in 2012, you know? And so um, but I so do, these are really good questions. I do still value building audiences on Instagram for the pure fact of going live. So if you're comfortable going live, like we can go live and get hundreds of people now that we are at a scale of hundreds of thousands of agents that follow our accounts, um, we can go live and and get a lot of those people to take an action, come and join a training like this or or meet us at a mastermind or something like that. So um, now those city accounts can do the same thing. So just building those profiles up uh, so you have some other way to reach out to people with, with a push of a button. Another good thing about going live too is, and if you're like kind of nervous and you're scared and you don't, you've never done it before, you know, something that we do with our partners in our partnerships is we go live with them. So if you know somebody like who, uh, uh, a title company, you know, somebody who's not afraid of the camera um, or a, a real estate attorney or just any professionals right? Um, you can ask them to come on, like you're promoting their business, right? And just um, go on live and ask them questions and put all the pressure on them. That will help you break the ice, you know, and develop some really great connections. Yeah. I see your hand raised. Uh, Stephanie, you want to come live on camera here? Let's see. Sure. Can you guys hear go. me? Yes. yes. Okay. Hi. Thank you so Hi. much. You guys are providing such great content and I really, really appreciate it. You guys are making me think outside the box today. So thanks for that. I did Thank have you. a question you. on YouTube. Um, I feel like I'm really leaning into video over the last year or so, but I'm mainly doing like green screen educational videos on YouTube. Occasionally oh. I'll do a community video that's kind of like filmed off my phone, but I am not getting any leads anywhere. I'm running Facebook ads behind video, all kinds of stuff. And I just feel like maybe I'm missing the mark, like an ad form, or do you guys run ads at all to get attention? Typically what we've been doing with YouTube is more um, long tail Google search. We did, we have run ads to try to get views and that killed our channel, uh, one yeah. of our previous channels. Reason being is because when we run ads, there's a lot of people that will just click on the ad, click on the video and watch it for two seconds and it's not for them for whatever reason and, and they're out. And that tells um, Google or YouTube that they shouldn't share this video to other people because they're not going to watch it very long. So that's right. the experience we've had with that side of it. Um, if you like, we could pull up uh, your channel and we can we could kind of look at it a little if you want. 
Or we can, you know, look, we can probably schedule a, a call as well. You know, like we don't want to put you on blast and like bring up your channel. Yeah. But if you want to schedule a call with us, I mean, we love doing it. Um, and we you. can at least go through it with you because there is a funnel process. So uh, what I do want people to understand is one, you've got to stick with it. I mean, when you see people, like I said before, you know, you see people at the top of their game because now their content is being pushed at you, right? And you're like, how do they have so many followers and this and that? They've been in the game for years. So this is a long-term play. This is a long game, you know? And, and great, it's fantastic that you've started and you've done it. And I'm sure you kill on camera. And I love that you were like, hey, let me get on video. And you took advantage of this, you know, this interaction. So thank you so much because it means everything. And we just, we feed off of it and we need it uh, just as much as you do, but um, stick with it. And, but what I, what I want to say is that there are strategies, right? It's not just like you do the video, it will grow. Okay. But it takes a while. Like YouTube, very congested these days, you know, it's a very competitive edge. It doesn't mean it's not possible for you, right? But it is going to take a lot of consistency and strategy. And there are things that Jason does as well, you know, for funnels and, and just really lead generation uh, in specifically that uh, is a whole nother training and we're happy to do it. So uh, thank you for that feedback to let us know like what kind of content we should be bringing next time. Uh, Thanks, so we'll absolutely. And I, I can send you, uh, I think I have you on our Instagram, so I can send you a DM. You can schedule a call with us, no pitch or anything. We don't do a service for that. It's just, just see if we can help you there. Uh, Bree says y'all are awesome. I'm trying to get over. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying uh, to get I over the, the chat, the video anxiety. RATV.co forward slash meeting. Um, and you guys can schedule some time with us, you know, um, it's totally free. Just, you know, we can help you with anything specific and hopefully our meeting schedules are, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever time you think it kind of takes, you know, did she? Oh, that one. Uh, so cool. Brie said she's trying to get over her video anxiety. Yeah. So, you know, like here, here's the thing. It is a very personal thing. You know, you have to really do the work. Like I know that we're, sometimes we separate business from personal, right? But it is such a personal growth journey. And I think that the hardest thing isn't creating the content. The hardest thing is hitting the send button, right? Hitting the post, hitting the publish. And it, you can take baby steps, you know, get into a group that will help you be accountable, you know, um, that's going to be supportive. Maybe it's even just a running bunny, a running buddy, <laughs> running buddy. If you have a running bunny, that would be really good content. Yeah. Um, but to somebody who's going to, who is like you and, you know, they're nervous and they're scared. Um, and that you can just bounce off with, you know, and encourage each other or send each other your videos and then have them post it. Sometimes, you know, I would do this with acting, like for auditions or anything. I'm really bad at choosing what the best take was, right? And I'm hypercritical of myself, right? So sometimes because I know that about myself, I have Jason or, you know, I have my brother. I have somebody who's like, no, that's it. Just send it or they'll send it for me, you know? And and I'll, this is the truth, y'all. The, the videos, the posts that I've made that have made me feel the most vulnerable, like that is so silly. Like, it's just so silly. Like, you know what I mean? It might be funny, but it's silly or it's the most heartfelt or I feel the most exposed. Those are the videos that do the best, you know? Because pe courage is recognized, y'all. It's like, Wow, like she really put herself out there, or that was really silly, you know. And people aren't, you know, people just want to be entertained, you know, and they want to scroll. And and at the end of the day, what I always have to remind myself is I don't matter that much. Everyone is worried about themselves. Everyone is, is living in their own jungle, worried about their problems, their ambitions, their insecurities, right? So at the end of the day, they're not, they're, they're not focused on me. They're not going to bed at night thinking, God, we need to put out that video. It was so bad. You know, they're, they're just not, they're not talking about me. And so that helps me a lot too. But I promise you this, if you do get started on the other side of that, 
it becomes your normal. Like, I can't tell you how many things where I'd be like, oh, this is so scary going into it. But then little by little, just by doing it, you know, being on the other side of it a month later. And now it's just like, oh, I need this to be better. You know, I'm not even thinking about like the, the cringe, you know, I'm not thinking it doesn't feel doesn't make me nervous at all. It's just become a normal part of my business in my life. And one thing I correlate it to is if you had a client that was coming into town and they wanted to go look at a million dollar property and they said, uh, could we jump on a Zoom so I can meet you and and find out about the, the area? You would say yes. So it's no different. It's just getting seen by more people. That meeting can be duplicated now. You don't have to come up with all these bells and whistles, even though I love having tech and great cameras and all that kind of stuff, but you don't always have to have that. You can literally just jump on a Zoom, talk about what's going on in the area and publish it. Here's another thing that you can do. You know, here's two things that I just want to share with you uh, real quick. And I know Jason, even you have even more strategies that you want to share, right? I think that Um, was pretty much, if I can't show the phone, it's hard to tell the other ones. Um, And he does have, he does have a video. Obviously, we have a video um, that goes over all of this and it is very visual uh, that we can send out to all of you or you can find it on our YouTube channel. Subscribe and like. Um, But two things I want to share with you about getting over the anxiety. One thing that I used to do as a performer, like I I did a lot of theater uh, growing up and I loved it. Um, And this is, you know, I'm not getting religious with anybody or, um, you know, you believe whatever you want to believe. But this is something that worked for me. Okay. I truly believe that I am nothing like that. I just, sometimes if I open myself up and I empty my ego, right. I can let the spirit or whatever you call it run through me. Right. And use me. So I'm just a vessel. So when it comes to my talent, like if I'm going to go out there, am I going to be good enough? Am I going to be entertaining enough? Am I going to be pretty enough? All this stuff, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. It's just, I'm just an empty vessel that's allowing something to move through me. Okay. So if you kind of look at yourself like that, like it doesn't matter about me, but if I show up and ask to be used and to serve, then I can be helpful you know, to a lot of people. And that's the second thing that if you can just get out of your way and realize it's not about you, it's about the service that you're providing and the people that you're going to help, then you're going to do it. Because once that becomes the most important thing to you, then there's no second guessing it, right? Like a mother, you know, who weighs 120 pounds cannot lift a car. But if her baby was stuck under the tire, I guarantee you that car's getting lifted, right? So it's about your purpose. And it's about like getting outside of yourself to think about like, if I do this, if if I really did video, right? And if I just put myself out there, you know, maybe there's some haters. But by the way, you know, I've never met a hater who's doing better than me. So does it matter, you know? But if I do this, how would it impact my business? You know, how would it impact the people that see me and want to do it too? Because I guarantee you, people want to do it. You know, we're all afraid. Starting to think through that lens and see through that lens is really helpful for me. So hopefully that helps you as well. Awesome. Well, let me know if anybody else wants to jump on camera and ask some questions or just chat your question in. I know we've been on for uh, a while here, so we want to respect your time. But if you have questions, we're happy to stick around for a while and answer them. If not, we can and hopefully meet again one day. So grateful. That's it. It's It's about helping others. So grateful that you guys took the time to do this for us with no sales pitch. That's how most webinars end. Hello. Yes, we know that because normally we do have sales pitches. We we. We love to sell things, right? We have a software company. We have all kinds of things. But, um, you know, more than anything, Jason and I have been stuck behind a screen for the past three years, you know, and I love to collaborate with people. We love to just help people. We love doing what we do. And especially with, you know, all the experience and knowledge uh, that he has, it would just be such a waste to not. So we love connecting with you. We so appreciate that you showed up live and you're not just going to get the replay. Um, book a call with us if you'd like. Uh, We want to build community. You know, we really want to collaborate and we want to build some relationships. So no matter where you are in the world, um, in the real estate space, you know, we'd love to talk to you, get to know you and collaborate.
Well, thank you all so much for being on here today. Hopefully uh, you got as much value out of it as we did. We love connecting with you. Like we said, we, we love building community. There's hundreds of thousands of agents that follow our accounts. And our goal is to meet as many of you as possible and just engage and help as this market shifts. Obviously, things are going to get more challenging for some people, but I will encourage you, and I said this on our live, um, I was in the market when it crashed in 2007, 2008, and I was in an office environment at, at that time. And you would hear so many people standing after the Monday morning meetings saying how challenging it is and nobody was buying, nobody was selling, and they were considering getting out of the business. And a lot of people, a lot of agents were losing their homes at the time too. So I know if you wrap yourself up in that dialogue, you'll that'll become your truth too. And it doesn't have to be. In that time, that was the the best our business was. Um, it was just booming. We we couldn't keep up with the demand of helping people because no matter what, people are going to buy and sell. There's going to be some people maybe in distress, needing to do a short sale, facing foreclosure, whatever it is. Maybe it won't get that bad, but no matter what the market is, there is a niche for you. There is a, a person you can help. So uh, I encourage you to put your blinders on and take advantage of this opportunity to help a lot of people and to make a great income uh, as we move into this new phase of, of the real estate industry. So yeah, with that being said, y'all, I just want to ask you one thing. If you appreciated this content, if you really got something out of it, I just have one ask of you. And that's to stay in touch with us, hit us back and let us know what kind of content you want to see because that's going to help us grow our YouTube channel, right? And that's going to keep content and information free. You know, if we can grow that, then you can let big companies ad spend pay for your education, you know, and that's what it's all about. I mean, it's the best, it's the best system. It's the best platform. So if you really have any desire to uh, learn more and you're interested in something, especially, you know, in the market coming up this year, we all have so much to learn. Um, just, just let us know. That's all we ask. Awesome. Thank you all so much. And we'll talk to you again on the next training. Bye y'all. Thank you so much. Bye. I'm Winnie De Walmsley. And I'm Jason Edwards. With RETV and EXP. And did you know that we help agents from all around the world transform their business? That's right. If you'd like to see what partnering with us looks like for you, click the link down below to book a call. Hey. Ooh.